Welcome to the Real News Network. My name is Gregory Wilpert, and I'm coming to you from Quito, Ecuador. Uh, we're talking to Professor Boaventura de Sousa Santos, sociology professor at Coimbra University in Portugal. And uh, we're talking about the situation in Brazil, and we'll also be analyzing in, in the second part, the situation uh, in, in Latin America more generally uh, with the other legislative coups that have taken place in there uh, in, in Latin America in the past couple of years. So first of all, thanks, uh, Professor Boaventura de Sousa Santos for joining us again for part two. You mentioned the social movements. Is there anything you think that they can be doing uh, in order to reverse or uh, to, to uh, resolve this situation? Well, there are two movements that are being, uh, you know, taking place at the same time. One is the international uh, 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 move, which uh, within the, the continent, with UNASUR, when the, uh, the, the Parla Sur, which is the parliament of the South, that is uh, supposed to convene in Brasilia, that is to say, international pressure in the continent uh, to delegitimize uh, what is going on uh, as a kind of a political assassination, as a kind of a parliamentary coup, which is a kind of a, a state of exception within a constitutional, uh, supposedly constitutional normal situation. So this is the international pressure is being strong and, and some of the heads of states have already pronounced themselves uh, uh, but we have seen that before in, in other situations, and they were not very efficient. The second of all is, is the social movements. In fact, they are on the streets. They are organizing several at the diff different levels to try to put pressure on the, on the Senate. I doubt it that this pressure will be, will be uh, successful. The, the movements have basically two claims. The first one is against impeachment, so this government should continue, but a new government. So the, the second claim is as strong as the first one, a different government. We cannot have a government uh, in which the Minister of Agriculture is, is the, 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 the head of the, the biggest landowners and uh, industrial agriculture that is so much responsible for dispossession, for assassination of peasant leaders, of indigenous leaders. We cannot go on with a government headed by Dilma with these characteristics. So a different government, a left or center-left government until 2018. That's what they are trying to do. We don't know. I mean, it's, it's absolutely uncertain whether they will succeed or not. Well, just turning to the, uh, to the larger context in Latin America, and, you know, I mentioned in the introduction that, uh, that both Paraguay and Honduras faced a similar issue uh, with the removal of Zelaya and Fernando Lugo. Would you compare it to that situation? And if so, what, what does that say about uh, uh, Latin American pol politics and la Latin American political systems? Well, concerning the first question, of course, there are uh, very strong similarities and there are also differences. Uh, concerning Zelaya, uh, Zelaya was uh, uh, deposed in 2009 because he was trying to, uh, 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 to have a non-binding, actually, a non-binding referendum uh, on a constitutional assembly to change the constitution. That is to say, Manuel Zelaya was addressing the problem that is now at the core of all Latin American politics. Without a political reform, it will be impossible to have a sustainable democracy in Latin America. So he was trying to do that. Supreme Court decided that it was illegal. And uh, since it was illegal and, and Manuel Zelaya refused, uh, then uh, the, the Supreme Court had ordered uh, his arrest. But here, the military intervened, and instead of a trial, uh, they sent him into exile. So here you have a, a, a very active intervention of the military forces, which we don't have in, in, in Brazil. But again, the parliamentary uh, presence is the same. I mean, there was no change in the constitution, no change in the normal constitution. And in fact, uh, the, 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 the vice president came to power. And then, of course, we had uh, in 2010 uh, a new election and uh, while Zelaya was in exile. And in the parliament just decided that the vice president should become the, 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 the new president. And, uh, and in the case of uh, Fernando Lugo, Fernando Lugo was in power since 2009, and it was, uh, uh, you know, as Zelaya, and as, uh, as uh, you can see that in the broader context of Latin America, uh, as, uh, as in the case of Zelaya, as in the case of Lugo, as in the case of Dilma and Lula, 
as in the case of Christina Kirchner, these people came to power after, uh, you know, several decades of government by the oligarchies, by the dominant classes that traditionally have governed uh, 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 Latin America. In the case of Paraguay, the two parties, the Liberal Party and the Colorado Party. And Lugo won and then made an alliance with Liberal, which became the vice president. But there is a, a cable from the U.S. Embassy in 2009, and note, he was deposed, impeached in 2012, but in 2009, there is a cable that came out through the WikiLeaks by the U.S. Embassy, in which they say that the ex-president, Nicanor Duarte, is trying to invent a cause célèbre, that is to say, a pretext, a reason to create a situation of impeachment against Fernando Lugo, so that he would be deposed and the vice president would become the president. Well, that's precisely what happened three years later, in 2012. And the cult celeb here was a, a, a kind of a, a supposedly illegal land purchase, it was a conflict with, with peasants, and uh, was a serious conflict in which uh, many people believed that they were infiltrated by provocateurs because uh, uh, weapons were used that are never used by the peasants in Paraguay. And in fact, this created a kind of, of a political turmoil. And in the end, uh, that uh, uh, kind of unrest was uh, uh, considered enough reason uh, for the parliament uh, to impeach uh, uh, Fernando Lugo. And in fact, they didn't give him any time for defense. Fernando Lugo had two hours two hours to defend himself. And, uh, and uh, so it was really a mockery of, of, of democracy, but again, within a kind of a context of normal constitutional uh, proceeding. I mean, nothing happened. There was no dictatorship. There is, was no formal state of emergency. Everything was normal. But in fact, what this case also shown, uh, showed, as in the case of Zelaya, is that up uh, from now on, as, as the case of Brazil is, is showing, the Constitution is a convenience store. I mean, it, it can be used for any purpose, to buy anything, uh, because any interpretation is available and can be used to depose a government that uh, has been legitimately elected. We don't like it, but you invent a cause celeb, as it is in that uh, uh, cable of the U.S. Embassy. I think the cause celeb in Brazil was the Operation Car Wash, of course, that has nothing to do with, uh, formally, with, with uh, the impeachment, because nothing is uh, brought against uh, the president, but created a kind of a commotion about corruption and the fight around corruption, in particular about the corruption of the party that is in power, the PT, that created this social and political environment uh, conducive to the idea of the impeachment. But we know that the impeachment, the impeachment was spoken about by the, the conservative forces right after the election. I mean, they, they, they were really waiting for the cause célèbre, and they were waiting for that, and they found it, and as they did in Paraguay, uh, and as they did also with the Zelaya, which is this referendum. So in all these cases, we have a new form, a political form that is emerging in Latin America, which we could call the neo-coup. It's not a military coup. Uh, is everything is not a state of emergency. Everything is a constitutional, normal type of procedure, but really a twisting of of the normal uh, constitutional safeguards in order to serve uh, the the interests of those that have been defeated in elections. Don't like it. Uh, they feel powerful enough because they have at their services the media to depose a legitimately elected president. And this is happening too often in, uh, in, in Latin America to make us worry about the future of democracy in Latin America. Just, unfortunately, we've run out of time now, but yeah. um, I just want to add one quick comment about um, the situation from what you've been saying. It seems like uh, one lesson that one could perhaps also uh, uh, draw from all of this is that uh, the governments would have to also uh, that is, the progressive governments also need to, to make sure that they take control of the uh, parliament because that apparently wasn't the case in Honduras and in uh, in Brazil and in, in Paraguay. Whereas in Venezuela, for a long time, the government did have, uh, that is, the president did have the same, uh, a majority in the parliament, and that made a huge difference, I think. 
anyway, but unfortunately we've had uh, we've run out of time, so we need to uh, cut this off. But um, hopefully we'll definitely follow up again, depending on what happens uh, next week, probably when the Senate votes. So uh, thanks so much again, Boaventura, for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for watching The Real News Network.